Good morning folks, I'm Dan. This morning I wanted to cover just a couple little basics about the Xena series of aircraft, which applies to some other aircraft too, but um, specifically for the Xena since that's my experience with it. A little bit of confusion, I guess. I, I had a friend of mine I was talking to that's been watching my videos, and he said, well, he didn't really understand any of it, but he'd watched it because it was my videos. So it, uh, it relates to just some of the terminology and some of the basics that the Zenith uses and and I guess I take it fairly for granted because I've been working on this plane a little bit and it's drill bit sizes, Clico sizes, um, rivet sizes and how the designations go and measuring out. Um, Zenith basically uses there's three main rivets or three main drill sizes that we use and there's more than that but we predominantly use a number 40 a number 30 and a number 20 drill and then 3 sixteenths and, and there's some quarter inch stuff but anyway the majority of sheet metal construction itself is number 40 number 30 and number 20 number 40 size drill bit is a 40 Clico size so basically when we're drilling a hole we drill our first hole with a number 40 and hold everything together with a number 40 Clico and and then usually we will enlarge those to a number 30 drill bit which is a A4 rivet size which A4 is um, 1 8 inch and they they designate them as a grip size of zero to quarter inch, quarter inch and that's an a4 rivet so it's an avex rivet which is a pop style rivet they consider them a non-structural rivet in the aviation world but Zenith have modified the way they pull to make them a structural rivet or what I now consider a structural rivet and they've done that by doming the head but drill bit sizes we've gone we do um, number 30 is going to be an A4 size and number 20 drill bit is a 5 rivet size which is um, 5 30 seconds and it's got, they call zip range, a grip range of 0 to 5 sixteenths. So that's the way we designate those rivets and the, and the Clecos. Clecos are, um, by size, they're also designated by color, is, is kind of the, the industry standard. 330 seconds is what we call a, a silver Cleco, which it's a silver color or cad plated, I think they call them. Um, eighth inch is going to be a copper color and then 530 seconds is a black body color so they're easy to, to designate what size hole you've drilled and what they are just by by looking at the color um, Clecos you'll find several different sizes and and those, well several different styles of, of what they are this is kind of the standard that they put out that we use that, that we purchase now um, there's a lot of variations to those they make stubbies uh, Clecos to get in tight places. They make uh, wing nut Clecos and nut Clecos to tighten down to get better better holding harmony. But these are predominantly the the main Cleco styles that we use, and it's the most convenient to use probably. Um, number forty size or three thirty seconds. I've got a bunch of oddball stuff because I don't have as many Clecos. So as I run short of Clecos, I, I start using some of the some of these stubby style. Like this is a this is a stubby, and these are Clecos that I've bought used from someone else you know I've, I've acquired them somewhere or another they're all functional Clico some work better than others um, that's not a number 40 there so you'll run into all different styles of those uh, some fat bodied ones and there's all kinds of different designations but usually the silver ones are what we use um, all of the stuff that I use, I'll put links down in the description. There's several different suppliers for them. Aircraft Spruce, of course, is, is going to have them. And a lot of mine have come from Aircraft Spruce. A lot of them have come from Amazon. New, they're 65 cents a piece. You know, the the oddball stuff, I, I've got quite a few in both 8th inch and 530 seconds too. But those I actually keep segregated because I've got enough Clecos in those sizes of the, of the standard or what I consider the standard designs now that I keep kind of the oddball separate because they can, it's not as fast to use them. It's not as fast to figure out what size it is, even though I put them all in the same tub when I pull them out why they go back in the in the same little tubs for their size and everything. So some of these oddball sizes, they're, it just slows you down a little bit. So I don't use them as much. The A4 and the A5 rivets, they are, Zenith actually calls for a countersunk rivet. And they look like, this and this is both an A4 and an A5 and they're a countersunk rivet you, you can see it better on the A5 where it's designed to be for your skin to either be dimpled or countersunk so that they're a flush rivet. Zenith has changed that design to, to make them into a what I, what I consider the structural rivet and this one's partially pulled just to show the way they reformed the head and they've domed the head 
hopefully that'll show up enough um, so you've got a dome on the outside so not only does it pull them together but it's also squeezing the outside down onto the top of the skin to, to supposedly give a little more holding power so that's how those rivets are pulled and that's why we modify rivet heads to um, to form that head and I've done a video on that I'll put a link up here or down here or someplace in the description so that you can go and look at that video if that interests you about how I convert them everything that you need to know is in the construction standards that Zenith gives you when you buy their plans so it's just a matter of going back and studying all that edge distances and everything standard edge distance from on the edge of a sheet when you're drilling a hole is 10 millimeter and it gives you spacing and how you lay it out and all that um, and that's all in the uh, in the assembly standards that Zenith gives so all the information is there for you if you take the time to look at it I'm used to working in English units Imperial units rather than metric units so I have to slow down and sometimes go back and read how long is that metric, you know, how does that equate or what we're doing. What I found I do on these rulers that are marked dual, and I use an Olfa knife to cut my aluminum quite a bit, I will try and measure on the metric side of the rule, and then as a straight edge I will try and use the inch side because it will raise a little bit of a burr on the edge of that ruler over time by, by running that Olfa knife along the edge. You'll get a rough edge on your on your metric measurements there. So I try and, and measure on the other side. That's just a, a little quick tip. Pitch lines was another one. If we're if we're doing a A4 pitch 40, we're doing a A4 rivet on a pitch or a spacing distance of 40 millimeters. So that's the way that's laid out. So if it's an A4 pitch 40, it's a, an A4 rivet every 40 millimeters. You know, pitch 20 is every 20 millimeters. So that's the way that's laid out. As far as sourcing materials, I buy materials from quite a few different uh, sources, and you have to decide, that's your personal responsibility to decide what materials are going to be appropriate for projects. Uh, rivets are one of them. Zenith would like you to buy rivets from them, of course, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Aircraft Spruce supplies Zenith rivets. Now I see they have them packaged, plus they also have um, AVEX rivets with, if you look at the part numbers, you're going to find some correlation if not the exact same part numbers um, if you choose to use rivets other than Zenith from, other than supplied by Zenith it's your responsibility as a builder to decide if that's going to be appropriate for your project um, I personally source my rivets from a different supplier um, they're substantially cheaper and um, I've made the decision that looking at the specifications for those rivets looking for the part numbers looking at the part numbers and everything that this is a acceptable substitute if not the exact same rivet from a, another US supplier so I'm very comfortable with those but that's my decision and I accept the responsibility for choosing those materials to do that or choosing those rivets to do that so that's everybody's own choice you're gonna have to decide if that's appropriate for you or if you want to use strictly uh, Zenith rivets at one point in time there was a discussion that Zenith did a better quality control on their rivets and that may very well be true um, like I say it was my decision to use AVEX rivets from a different source so um, if that's a problem down the road that's my responsibility that's nothing wrong with the plans that's nothing wrong with the design that's nothing wrong with Zenith um, it's just my choice and it's on me so as a builder you have to accept the responsibility for every decision you make um, I'll put links to some of these things that I use down in the description uh, if you find these videos helpful why hit that subscribe button and maybe the bell notification to let you know when I put out a video uh, give me a thumbs up if you like and thanks for taking the time to watch